Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy and I am super thankful that you are joining me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best, where today we are going to break down the following standard. MA.3.AR.1.1. MA, it stands for mathematics. Three for third grade. AR for algebraic reasoning, which is so fancy. That first one means that we're going to be focusing on multiplication and division problems for the first standard today. Okay, it says that we are going to apply the distributive property to multiply one digit numbers and two digit numbers. So that means a one digit number times a two digit number. We will also apply properties of multiplication, meaning the commutative property of multiplication where we flip flop the factors around. We can change the order of the factors and it doesn't change the product or the associative property, which is our grouping property. It doesn't matter which order that we group and multiply our factors, we will still arrive at the same product. So those two properties, the associative property and the commutative property are embedded in this standard. And our job as teachers is to highlight them whenever we can, okay? Most of the focus is on the distributive property, but we need to showcase, we need to highlight the commutative property and the associative property whenever we can. Um, so we'll apply those properties to multiplication to find a product, means that we're multiplying, of one digit whole numbers. So not only are we working with one digit by one digit, we are also going to be working with one digit times two digit numbers. This is different for third grade when we're coming from the Common Core standards. As you can see in the example right here, the product of four times 72, that used to be a fourth grade skill that we were working on, and now it is in third grade, which is awesome because our third graders can definitely handle it. So I love this example here because it shows you the steps for the distributive property, like how we're thinking about it. It says the product of four times 72 can be found by rewriting the expression as four times 70 plus two. We're breaking down that factor. That's what the distributive property is. It's where we take one of the factors and we break it down to make it easier to multiply. So if we break down the factor of 72 into 70 plus two, it then makes it easier for us to solve. So then we could use the distributive property to obtain, it's a fancy word, to obtain four times 70 plus four times two. Basically we're taking that four, the factor that we did not break down and we're distributing it with the factor that we did break down, four times 70, four times two, and adding them together. Now, before I continue anymore, I have to let you know that this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public. So make sure you go on their website so you can follow along with me with the same document here, okay? Um, let's see, what else jumped out at me with these clarifications where they give you a little bit more knowledge about the standard? Um, it says within this benchmark, the expectation is to apply the associative and commutative properties. We talked about that. We will be utilizing parentheses, just like we did up in the example. When we're multiplication for products of three or more numbers, we need to make sure we're keeping those within the factors of 12. Now we are going to get larger like that four times 72, but if we're multiplying three factors or more, we need to make sure that we keep them inside of that 12 limit that they gave us. 
Um, all right, so what other benchmarks align with what we're going over? Well, we have MA.3.NSO.2.3, and I starred this one because this one leads us into the distributed property. We need the knowledge of the standard because the standard for 2.3 is where we have one digit times a multiple of 10 or 100. So when we're multiplying four times 70, that's in NSO.2.3. And then MA.3.NSO.2.4 is where we are multiplying zero through 12. Let's go over to some terms that you need to make sure that you know and that your students know. The term expression. Expression means that there is no equal sign. There actually might be an equal sign present, but we're not focusing, we might be focusing on the value to the left or to the right of an equal sign if that's the case. An equation means that there is an equal sign present and the distributive property is where we break down one factor. We talked about that. And factors are what you are multiplying by. You multiply factors by factors to get products. So we need to make sure that we are constantly using and um, expecting our students to use that vocabulary too. Vertical alignment, where are they coming from? Well, in second grade, they have composed and decomposed numbers, which is great because they practice breaking them down. It's like 72 into 70 plus two. So that shouldn't be the new thing. We have NSO.2.2, that's where we're multiplying three digits by two digits. So we are taking them up there. And then also in fourth grade, this is more of the fluent one, still multiplying multi-digit numbers two by two, but it is with more fluency with a standard algorithm, okay? So you can see that this, actually this standard I wrote up here is important and super helpful. The distributive property is one that students normally get really confused with, but it's actually really essential to helping to build their multiplication fluency, which we'll talk about more in just a second, I think, when we get into this. All right, so we're scrolling down into the purpose and instructional strategies section, and I'm just going to mention what jumped out at me here. So. Um, it says that we are multiplying, like we said, one digit numbers and using the multiples of 10 to then multiply one digit number and a two digit number. Okay, this is the most important thing. The main takeaway that we are using the distributive property as a tool, as a strategy for using products that they know in order to solve products that they do not know. And I, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the example too. For example, if we're trying to find the product of six times nine, six times nine, especially in third grade, is one of those that doesn't come to students right away. But they might decompose six into four and two, which then you could use the double, the doubling strategy for your twos and your double double strategy for your fours to figure those out. But I would personally, if I had five, six times nine, I would say, oh, I know what five times nine is that's 45. I need one more nine to get up to 54. When we talk like this and we think aloud like this, we are using the distributive property of multiplication. It's a, an incredible strategy. It's not a big, hairy, scary thing. It's a strategy that our students need to know, okay? Then we need to, what we need to do is apply the commutative and associative properties and say that they can be reorganized, meaning that like right here, we've got six times nine, that could be grouped as four times nine plus two times nine, but we could say it could be nine times four. That would give us the same answer, the same product and nine times two. That right there is using the commutative property in action. And we need to highlight that, that, when we, can that we can change the order of the factors and still arrive at the same product Hey, that's the commutative property. As much as we can bring that up with the commutative property and the associative property, the better equipped our students will be at recognizing those patterns and rules when it comes to those properties. Um, a great way is to split arrays when you're talking about the distributive property of multiplication. I'm gonna go down um, right here. I love this in the misconception. In fact, a lot of times when I'm creating practice problems or tests, or even I think in the math misconception mystery, um, I use this mistake because this is a common mistake 
that students will make. And that is to say, if we had four times 72, students might break that into four times 70 times four times two, where that times should actually be a plus sign because we're just splitting the two parts and then we'll join the products at the end. Okay, so we're joining them together at the end, which means that we need to add. This addition that I'm looking at right now, it looks like they've updated, they meaning the Florida Department of Education, has added the strategies to support tiered instruction. And I would definitely take a look at that if you're wondering how you can help your students get to the level, definitely take a look at that. And I said here that I love this. I love how we're saying, okay, three times 24. If we were to model this with place value blocks, that would be three groups, one, two, three of 24. We've got two tens and ones. And naturally, if you were to say to students, how would you count these up? They probably would say we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, which is that three times 20, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 60 plus 12, that gives us 72. And that's how their brains are probably naturally going to think about joining those together. It's just the distributive property. This might seem kind of confusing, but the more that we can connect the place value blocks or the arrays to what's happening with these equations or with these expressions, the better it's going to be for them and they won't be confused anymore, okay? Right here, I wanted to point out that this instructional task item that they give you, these are just kind of sample problems so you can wrap your head around what it might look like in action. And um, for this one, we're finding the missing value of N. So they're plugging in Ns in any position and you have to use your knowledge of the distributive property to figure out what is that missing value. And I mentioned here that we practice this in taking on the best. I'll show you in a second when we go to the resources. And then this is a typical style of problem right down here that you might see. Again, the most of the focus, as you can see in tackling the standard, is the distributive property. But the commutative property and the associative property are right there. And any time that we can highlight them, that's gonna be awesome, okay? All right, now that we've gone over the standard, let me show you what you have access to with your membership. So here we are at the website. We're gonna to go to members, enter here, taking on the best. You should already, hopefully you're already logged in. If not, I might ask you to log in. Working on third grade and the first, oh, sorry, the AR strand for algebraic reasoning. 3.AR.1.1 properties of multiplication. Here are the resources that you have. So if you have, oh, it's gonna play. <laughs> that was me. If you have the bronze resources, you have the video lessons and the student guides. Now, if you're a silver or a gold member, you have access to all of these as well. You can see, let me actually refresh this so we can see what the title is. So we have the um, commutative and associative properties of multiplication. I felt that it was important to break those down to highlight what those were and separate them and give them their own isolated practice so they could start exploring them when we get to the distributive property. And then you have the uh, printable guides right here. Okay. So we walk through all of it in the video. Students just take notes as we go. We have the distributive property of multiplication with one digit factor. So one digit times one digit. And this is what it looks like here. We'll be representing our thinking with an array and breaking apart one factor using those, those expressions. Then we have the distributive property of multiplication one digit times two digits. So here we go practicing the three times 64, breaking apart the two digit factor to model the distributive property of multiplication. And here you can see it's 81 times six. They might be used to seeing it with the one digit first, but according to the commutative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter the order. We could change it around if it helps us to see it better. So that's cool. Um, and then here is the one, again, with one digit times two digits where we have that missing value that I mentioned in the, the standard breakdown. 
okay? So you can check those videos out. By the way, you are able to share these videos. A lot of counties tend to block Vimeo videos. I'm aware of that. Um, so if you, oh, hang on, let me go back so I can show you what I did. If you click on the little paper airplane, click the link right here, and you will be able to download the video right there and then re-upload it as yourself. So um, that way, whatever platform you're using, you can have access to that video and upload it as you. All right, so then we have the silver plan. I'm going to click that. We can go back to those bronze resources at any time. But in your silver, we've, let me go ahead and open up the printables that you have access to. Okay, so we know that, that if there's a video icon, that's a video lesson. And then after that, we have extra practice with the silver membership. So if you're a silver member or a gold member, you have access to these. And students can then practice what they've learned in the videos, but on their own this time. Video lesson, extra practice based on that video lesson, video lesson, extra practice. And here's that one again with that missing value, video lesson, and then some extra practice problems. All right, and then you have the math mission, which is like a math, it's, it's a math task. It's not like a math task, it is a math task. It's usually a multi-part problem where in the video lessons on the bronze section, we isolate the skills for the math tasks. We're putting them all back together again. So this one says to use the commutative property of multiplication. Then we have the associative property of multiplication and then the distributive property of multiplication. So throwing everything back together again. And then one, one of my personal faves is the math misconception mystery where students will solve this problem on their own. Um, it is a video. It's right here. If I go back to the page, it's this video right here. And basically I walk you through the whole thing. I'll be your guide and your host and students will solve the problem either independently or with a group. And then after they solve it, they will watch as four characters solve it which are really just me dressed up in silly costumes. Those four characters will, of the four characters, sorry, three of them will make a mistake that students will commonly make and only one of them solves it correctly. So students will jump down their notes after each character presents their work and then they will fill out their detective report and showcase who the most reasonable answer belongs to and then evaluate the work of the other three characters, which is awesome, okay? It's a big hit with teachers and an even bigger hit with the students. They love these math misconception mystery videos. For the gold resources, you have, let me go here. You can go back to your bronze and your silver at any time, but you have a mini assessment. You've got your answer key. You've got this ad-free version that you're watching right now of breaking down the best and you have McCarthy Math 155. I'm gonna click on the, and the mini assessment so you can quickly see the variety of questions that you have at your fingertips. You also have the answer key. And then McCarthy Math 155, this was the intervention program that I created for the Common Core Standards to what we're doing now. That's why I created Taking On The Best, but you do have a lot of practice. So we've got a lot of multiplication videos, 13 multiplication videos. 15 division videos um you know here we have properties of multiplication if i click on that you can see that you have a lot of little extras to be able to use with your students so if you have students who are struggling with these kind of skills definitely check out this if you have the gold plan okay all right i think that's it i'm super excited about this standard i love the distributive property of multiplication and before we go i just want to remind you that what you do with your life it really does matter thank you so much for everything that you do to to help to help them build those mathematical confidence muscles i really do appreciate your time and watching this video and i'm here to support you so thank you for everything that you do and i'll see you next time Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.